Hi, I'm Jason Mears and this is Host Client Networking, part of the vSphere 7 Home Lab series. So we're just going to log in through the host client, which is where we hit the IP address of the ESXi server itself directly, rather than going through vCenter server. And in this video, we're going to focus uh, entirely on networking. So from the left hand side, we select networking and we start with port groups. So these are the things that virtual machines actually attach to. If I wanted to add a new port group, I could just type a name here. I could select a virtual switch to attach it to. I currently only have one, vSwitch 0, and I could optionally provide a VLAN ID. I can also set some security settings here, but it's quite common just to inherit these settings from the switch. So you set them once, and all the port groups inherit that automatically. I'm going to cancel that because I've already got some port groups. This one here is a standard switch 0, VLAN 0000. This is my default VLAN where I have um, most of my virtual machines running. I have more port, group, port groups for vCenter HA, Replication, vMotion. If I just go into VLAN 0000, my default, you can see I've got two virtual machines, Folding at Home and vCenter. And they're the details for the port group. Again, most of these settings are inherited from the switch. It just keeps things a little bit simpler if you set them at the switch level and then uh, um, inherit them on every port group. And you can see the three network cards or uplinks that are used on that switch. We'll talk more about those shortly. So two connections to that switch and three uplink adapters. So these are physical adapters going out to the real world and switching. So this is um, one of my adapters connected to vSwitch 0. Um, you can see it's discovered that it's connected to a Cisco 2821 on gigabit 00. And you can see which subnets it's discovered or it knows about. These are the ones it's seen traffic go past on. If I click on the network I use for vCenter high availability, again we'll do another video on this in the future. That's the port group for vCenter HA. I've got a separate port group for things like replication, and you'll see they're all on different VLANs. This one's on VLAN 300. Again connected to the same virtual switch, connected to the same physical adapters. So if we look at these virtual switches, um, virtual switch 0 which is a standard switch installed by default I've got some settings here I've got an MTU of 1700 that's maximum transmit unit there are certain VMware products which require a slightly larger MTU anywhere between 1550 1600 1650 so I, I generally set it to 1700 so I know that I'm, I'm uh, compatible with all those different MTU settings some people would just tick jumbo frames instead and effectively set it to 9000 so you can see on this switch, um, we've got port groups on the left, and we've got the physical adapters on the right, and each of these port groups has got services or virtual machines attached to them. That's the replication, vMotion and management, and you can see those VM kernel adapters that belong to each one. I've also got an NVIDIA switch. This isn't configured correctly. Um, this is a, a beta version of NSX3 that I was using that I uh, didn't remove properly and I've left a little bit of leftover on the screen. So just ignore that NVIDIA switch. We'll cover that in a subsequent video. These are the physical adapters. So I've got seven network cards in the server. I've got one um, built in and I've got two Broadcom and then four on an Intel i350 adapter. Again, in here you can get more detail about the physical adapter. Again, you can see Cisco Discovery Protocol has found the 2821 router I use for my subnets on and knows it's connected to Gigabit Ethernet 00. Not much I can change here to edit settings.
If I now go for the VM kernel NICs, which are the ones that run VMware services, I've got a VM kernel NIC for management. This is how I'm actually getting to the box now. This is the one that the host client's running on. This is the interface that this web interface is presented on. I've also got one set up for replication, so I can replicate traffic between, and I've also got a vMotion one, and you'll notice there are different TCP IP stacks for different things. I'm using the default stack for management and replication, but I'm using a specific vMotion TCP IP stack for running vMotion traffic, because I want to keep them separate or have different settings for them. You don't have to use different TCP IP stacks, you can keep them on the default if you want, but if you're trying to separate traffic or do more advanced things, it's worth knowing that that option is there. Again, an overview of the settings, then a, a picture of how it's you know, logically connected on the right. You can see vMotion is enabled, but all the other services are disabled. So that's specific to that vMotion stack. You can see all the possible services and just the ones that are enabled or not. Those are ones I don't know what they are. I think they're left over from that installation I didn't remove properly. Here are the possible stacks, so the default one plus all the other stacks. Again, some people might spend their entire life never even knowing that these are here, but if you want some kind of separation or um, finesse in, in here, you can use different stacks for different things. So we've got NICs connected to switches, connected to port groups, connected to virtual machines. So that was host client networking, part of the vSphere 7 Home Lab series. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you found that useful.